There were a pair of remarks of the weekend that some saw as warning signs that President Trump, if he were to lose the election, would not be inclined to accept the result. It started with a tweet by evangelist Jerry Falwell Jr. that he now supports what he calls reparations, two additional years added to President Trump's first term because of what Falwell called a, quote, time stolen by this corrupt failed coup. The president echoed that sentiment on Twitter about an hour later. Quote, despite the tremendous success that I've had as president, including perhaps the greatest economy and most successful two years of any president in history, they have stolen two years of my, our presidency, collusion, delusion, that we will never be able to get back. The word stolen certainly raised some eyebrows. This after House Speaker Pelosi told the New York Times on Saturday that she was deeply concerned the president might try to delegitimize the 2020 results should he narrowly lose based on what happened in last year's midterms. If there had been close contests last year, Pelosi told the Times he would poison the public mind. He would challenge each of the races. He would say, you can't seat these people. We had to win. Imagine if we hadn't won. Oh, don't even imagine. So as we go forward, we have to have the same approach. Here with me now is CNN political commentator Steve Cortez, a 2016 Trump campaign advisor, and uh, also CNN political analyst Kirsten Powers, a USA Today columnist. So Kirsten, I mean, do you think there's any valid concern from Speaker Pelosi that the, the president might try to challenge the election results? I, I think it's a reasonable thing to be worried about. I mean, he's obviously somebody who um, sees uh, Democratic voter fraud around every bush. I mean, he's he's, you know, uh, has all sorts of imaginations about what has and happened and has and hasn't happened in elections, you know, when it comes to crowd size and, and other things like that. And so I think that he looks for these areas that, you know, maybe say, like she said, like might be close and could try to really stoke the idea that something unfair had happened, that there'd been some sort of fraud, um, some sort of voter fraud uh, that he, that hardly ever happens, but that he is, he and Republicans um, love to fan the flames to make everybody think that this is basically happening everywhere. Steve, I mean, the president already claims that, you know, millions of, uh, there were millions of illegal votes cast by illegal immigrants in California, and that's why uh, Hillary Clinton uh, won the popular vote in California. Is it far-fetched to think the president might challenge 2020 results if, in fact, he lost? Uh, it, look, it's incredibly far-fetched. I, I almost honestly, Anderson, can't believe that we're talking about this, quite frankly. I saw this a lot on MSNBC over the weekend. People like Donnie Deutsch, who claims that every single Trump voter is a Nazi, something he said about 63 million Americans. He's pushing this conspiracy already out there. It, it, to me, it's absurd. We're talking about he would, he might. He shall. I mean, it's all supposition. I suppose that it's possible that the president will do this. Right. What's really going on here? This is about character assassination. It's about trying to smear him. It's, it's just the same as calling him a racist. Let's, let's say he's an authoritarian. Wait, he's Rather than talk about, about his about actual record. Back, I mean, you have Jerry Falwell Jr., who uh, you know, runs the university, is talking about the president should get two more right. years because of an attempted coup. The president right. has said it's, there was an attempted coup against him. So if he believed there was an attempted coup. Well, there was. Coup, Really? Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> there, 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 abso there absolutely was an attempted coup against him. No, and by the way, here's, here's wow. the, this is part of the paradox, is that, you, you know, you and many on the wow. left are, are accusing the president uh, of having these hey, authoritarian... I'm not on the left, but uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, of, of having authoritarian tendencies, when in fact, uh, I haven't accused if there are actually... If there are actually state, well, the, the, the supposition of the question is that he has authoritarian tendencies, that he no, would be willing to, if, to if somehow resist... He, he says that... Millions of illegal votes were cast in California, and there's no evidence of that. He formed a commission about it that had to disband because they couldn't find anything. Uh, so it's not like made out of whole cloth. He's talking about a coup, and I'm surprised you're talking about a coup as well. Okay. Okay, look, when, our national, when the national security apparatuses of the United States are weaponized for political purposes, I, I define that as a coup. And when you have the absolute top echelon of the Obama DOJ and FBI using national security as a pretense to spy on an opposition campaign and then on an incoming president and to try to delegitimize him, so there that, was in no my definition, is like, absolutely okay, Kirsten, a coup. Uh, I I just, I mean, first of all, Webster's Dictionary would disagree with you, okay? The, nothing that has occurred comes anywhere near being a coup. Let's talk about the fact that the president uh, thinks that he's been robbed of two years. Bill Clinton was under investigation for what started as Whitewater and ended up, you know, into this crazy, you know, situation uh, going through his sex life. 
was for five years. Okay, so so please spare us this idea that somehow he's been robbed of something. Bill Clinton managed to work with Congress, you know, pass legislation, be a president during all of that and didn't act like anybody was owed something. The second problem is invoking reparations. Reparations is to repay black people who were kidnapped and enslaved and brought to the shores and built literally our entire economy and our entire country. So to invoke reparations over something like that is 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 literally that's the biggest outrage of what has happened today. And I don't okay. know how you can so defend what that. you're doing there. Kirsten, what you're doing there is you're actually combining the two smears. So not only is the president a racist, he's also authoritarian. Uh, look, obviously, I, you're the, the, the only the person who's mentioned was, authoritarianism. The, I'm talking about the fact well, that he says that, that he retweeted refusing something, to saying, to retweeted leave office. something saying that he should get an extra two years as reparations. Okay, reparations and it's a joke. is used to talk. Oh, so slavery's funny. It's slavery's no, funny. Who that, mentioned slavery? Saying? Slavery is not part. You're injecting for? slavery into it. What, what do you think Look, reparations? The word are for? reparation. The word reparation has meaning outside of only slavery. No. There can be reparations for but all kinds of things. You just said it was a joke, it which means it, you're saying it was a joke, which means it was an. Ex it, it's actually referring it's an exaggeration to, to make slavery a point. reparations. And that's what the that's what the joke of, I yeah. guess no, is. No, not remotely. No, 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 no. Don't put words in my mouth. Anderson. I'm not, I'm not I'm saying that at all. I don't understand how. What? How is it a joke then? I'm saying I'm saying it's a joke that he deserves those years back. It's oh. it's clearly an exaggeration that okay. he deserves those years back as reparation for having those for having a deal with the Mueller probe. It has nothing to do with slavery. But it has Steve, nothing he, to do he, with he, race. It actually this has is a, everything what you to do all with are it. doing Steve, right now Steve, is exactly on. what I'm talking about. No, Steve, Steve, he says in the tweet, "Now I support reparations." He is clearly referring to the conversation that's going on in this country right now about whether or not there should be reparations. And the conversation that's happening right now is about slavery. Okay, so don't try to act like that's not what it was in reference to. All right, let's leave it there. Kirsten Powers, uh, Steve Cortez. I have no idea what that that, that was it, remotely what it was in reference to. What I am saying, which I think is important <laughs> for this country. Uh, is that we cannot, if you want to take on the president and beat him in 2020, take him on on his record and his policies, not on smears and supposition we don't such work that for the he will not leave office if he loses. About. It's not, that's not what we're ha talking about here. We're not talking about how to beat Donald Trump. We're talking about what happened today. Yeah. All right. Well, let's leave it there. Uh, Kirsten, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Still ahead, the baby announcement.